Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and now I'm going to answer a very interesting question about horn speakers. So Nick asked the question that uh, I'm, I'm going to read it out and, and share my thoughts about it. Hi Janos, I'm considering building a massive horn loudspeaker with a full range driver. I'm learning the mechanics of horn building, round, square, rectangle, size, frequency range, directivity pattern, I have seen your horny videos, but I'm struggling to find design information, especially narrow directivity control. Is this an interesting subject to cover? And I think here, uh, the, the most important part, if, if you want uh, a big horn cabinet using a single driver, uh, I'm, I don't think that directivity is, is the biggest problem for the most practical application. Uh, my ex I have not built any single driver through horns, uh, but I have heard uh, some. Actually, I heard one which was simply outstanding. It's the, low, it's the late uh, Dr. Bruce Edgarn's uh, loader horn and, and it, it was simply fantastic and it was a rear loaded horn so not a front loaded and, uh, and, and what I can recommend and what I have seen of uh, full range horn designs all of them are rear loaded so basically the horn is in, not in front of the driver but it's behind the driver and, and the reason for that is for, for a horn speaker you need to amplify the whole frequency range with the horn but uh, but with a single driver that's that's not so easy because uh, as as the efficiency of the driver goes it, it it is much higher for for a single driver speaker in the high frequencies compared to the low frequencies and then if you put a horn in front of the driver then you are going to have massive issues uh, with high frequencies massively over represented compared to the base and, uh, and and also you will have directivity issues so you will have the worst of the two worlds and, and if you want to correct the directivity that's not enough you will still have problems with the frequency balance it's not going to work and you won't be able to place it in your room correctly Yes, because it, it will be too it just be, it will be beyond massive and beyond impractical uh, unless you have a concert hall and uh, that size um, there it can be more mm, well practical build for a for a, a whole a whole size uh, hall <laughs> but if if we are thinking about a living room even a massive living room uh, a rear loaded horn with a full range driver I think is the only practical uh, approach and, and that's because uh, then you have the full range drivers especially with the visor cones the visor cone does the horn loading for the high frequencies and you need the rear horn loading for, for the bass essentially and, and your task as a designer is to design the, the length of the rear horn to give equal amount of amplification as what the visor cone is producing for the high frequencies and that's, not, that's a mean task, a really mean task and, and it's, it's not to be considered lightly and the only example I've ever heard of was this uh, loudspeaker of the late Dr. Bruce Edgars. Uh, he has not published plans for that and he only built two pairs of this speaker. This was not one of uh, his speakers that, that, that people could order from him. Uh, only, only two pairs were ever made, one for my friend Charlie. And, uh, and uh, all of the other rear loaded horns which are the F Fostex designs are, are very very far cry from, from that from the Bruce Edgar's uh, louder horn 
And, and I would say that in the history of the rear loaded or, or, or horn loaded full range drivers, that was the only loudspeaker which, which really hits that mark that I think is, uh, is bringing out the horn potential from a single driver. Every single other implementation in my experience is vastly inferior to a void pipe implementation with a, a, a driver. And, and the late Dr. Bruce Edgar, he, he was the grandmaster of horn design. So I think uh, personally, I, I would not go in that direction unless you spend you, you plan to spend decades of uh, finding a choice, I mean, finding a solution and, and building. Probably you will have to build like uh, at least like 50 prototypes and, and uh, uh, just uh, like doing iterations of, of finding your road there. So it, it, it is not something that, that anyone can give you uh, a practical advice because doc, uh, Dr. Bruce Edgar passed away sadly I think he would be the only one who can really give uh, useful pointers on, on a horn-loaded, successful full-range driver. I don't know anyone else who, who can do that. Maybe there's someone I just haven't heard of, of them. Uh, and th that might be just my limitation, so I don't want to discourage you in any way to try it out or to find uh, choices um, or keep on looking. But uh, my advice is that uh, the void pipe cabinets are much more suitable to, for, for a full range driver cabinet that can uh, produce uh, the full range. Uh, they, they are really, really balanced. The full range drivers were developed for the void pipe cabinet. So it's, it's, it's a synergistic solution. When you want to put a full range driver in a horn, that, that's not a natural synergy. You have to maybe kind of like, like make, make, make a, a wheel into a square or something like that. It's like uh, bending backwards three times. It's, it's not something that, that, uh, that, the, uh, that the full range technology leans itself towards naturally. And uh, it, it can be done, uh, but, uh, but if, if you go towards the void pipe way, you will be much, you will be much more happy with it and, and reach success uh, like at one person the effort compared to going for horns. What you can do is if you want to uh, push the envelope, you can build a, a much longer void pipe. You can maybe like fold it and, and make like a four meters long or a six meter long pipe and uh, drive it with a full range driver. And, and that will just give a completely unearthly base, like, like go deep as the foundations of the earth will be just totally insane. So I would recommend the void pipe loading. It's also a kind of horn loading, um, but it's much more amenable for full range drivers. So Nick, that's my recommendation on, on, a, on a full range driver project uh, with uh, something as close to horn loading as possible, but not using the strict horn theory, but, uh, but but a variation of it that was naturally uh, presented for, for the full range drivers. And, and the full range drivers were created with, with that, with the void pipe op mode of operation in mind. And I, and I think that's my experience that they shine in, in a void pipe uh, configuration. That's where you can, or I could bring out the most of them. And uh, good luck with your audio journey. Uh, have fun. Bye-bye. Uh,